Hello again. Well, I've been making some bit of progress, and uh, we're going to have to revert to my old camera in a moment, just for a short section because I want this one doesn't do close up, and I've something to show you. However, we had a very pleasant day yesterday. Lovely visitor, someone I've known online for nearly two years I would think and he took the opportunity to visit and he brought me some stuff but I knew he was coming of course and uh, a real good box of goodies to be honest I mean this was quite a surprise you know he said he had something for me and he has and there's something else which is even some people would say better Although I could actually manage without it. Anyway, it all will be revealed soon and you'll understand why. You know, you talk about luck. People have been very kind at the moment. Anyway, what's the good in here? These are off cuts. He's felt that he gets at home. He works at, um, you know, from where he works. It, they, this is their cast-offs, which he collects. It's something I, I really miss, you know, when I... Obviously, I haven't been able to work 25 years, as I know about it now. Just doing this job, as I'll show in a moment, for oh, a few five to ten minute sessions and uh, an hour or so a day is already taking its toll. And it certainly can't be classed as heavy work, can it? Anyway, we won't uh, dwell on that, but it's just to let you know the situation. So, it's got that. For instance... And that should be perfectly, well it will be, perfectly suitable for the um, crankshaft. We call it the crankshaft even though the crank is on one end, obviously. But that is certainly long enough. So basically, sorry about the whizzy bit of video there, but look, I mean you've got a box of stuff here with all this nice stuff, you know, that we can use. And so the stockpile is well replenished. And like I said, he brought me something else very special. He had a bit of luck and he's passed his look on to me. So we're all a winner. But there's uh, lots and lots of stuff in here that I can use and need. And as I say, for instance, that piece will, you know, I could have got some, but I don't have to now. I've got it. Um, now the base itself is actually good enough now to make a start. Uh, I've done nothing to the underneath again. Or the, oh, I have, sorry. I've flatted it. Oh, you won't see on this camera very well, but I'm um, not messing about too much. Anyway, I've flatted it off and it's more or less level, but it's slightly higher that side. That side is slightly thicker than the other. So, I'm, you know, when it's fit, I'm going to have to go outside and grind a bit more off that's the thing but the top um, you can see that there's a slight indentation there but we're going to live with that that will polish out you know and that one way and most of it will be covered up anyway so that's sort of irrelevant now what I've been doing I've been making the flywheel made to start on the flywheel and in a moment as I say I've something to show you so I've been using my old and trusty power hacksaw <laughs> I tell you it's worn out <laughs> the joints are worn and it knocks and clacks but it still cuts fairly square and that's what I'm about to show you but that's why it's taken so long to do oh dear I don't know oh, I'm going to have to have a rest for in my grave, I think, after I finish this, if I don't watch it. Blooming nuisance, but there we go. That's what you get. So, when you're sawing, by the way, when you're sawing anything to keep straight, what you actually do is you start like that, and I've shown you a little bit of sawing, and you try and you no need to press hard, it's not heavy work. But you try and do even strokes using the full length of the blade. And then what you do, you go that way a little bit 
Hang on. It's slightly trapped now because it's shut. So what you do, you go like that and you start sewing like that and you go down following the line then you drop the front end a bit then your back end goes down again and so on so you do it in a series of cuts like that and in a circle I find it's best to turn round and just keep that in the same place the only thing is you get a slight it cuts the side slightly anyway I'm just going to swap cameras now because I've something to show you right I've swapped cameras very briefly just make the video a bit difficult, but never mind, that's what we're doing it for, isn't it? Now I'm going to zoom in very slowly if I can because I can't, that other camera will not focus because I just want you to see this. Now I'm sure if I come much more that might go out of focus. No, it hasn't. I'm sure you can see that I've actually sewn directly down the line. Well I've finished sewing this off and I'm sure I don't need to revert to the other camera to show you that it's uh, it's not bad. In fact it's fairly good. Um, where's me? Now I just want to show you though how I did it. So what I'll do, I know there's going to be quite a few short pieces on this, but uh, we'll just show you how we got the line and how true it is. And also on the, on the base. I now want to just show you how true it is. But just before we do that, I want to do a one inch bore. Now, like I said, that piece of cast I did was a little bit large, but just for the video we can use it I found this and we can use this camera again for it what it is I've had it many many years and it made it work for a tool holder right to you know to cut a, a larger hole and it had a small um, stem in to put in the drill well I've actually cut it off and done it and drilled it for some reason I can't remember but that is one inch bright steel and it's ideal to make the piston absolutely ideal also quite by chance I happen to have a drill it's not one inch it's less which I want so there's something else that we're going to do that I'm going to have to manufacture which should make an interesting video so Towards the end of the build this will be, we can attempt to drill the bore. You see, we can attempt to do it. So anyway, that's uh, all in the future, but it's, that's another exciting bit of news to find that actually, because that will make a nice piston, because normally they make, you know, three quarter pistons, something like that. Uh, quite small. It doesn't have to do anything. It's not perfect, but it doesn't matter. You know, I mean, it's only going to run up and down a few dozen times, isn't it? At the end of it, so that doesn't matter. But that will do it. So, you know, it saves me getting it. I like to use what I've got, if possible. And because of Alan's help, thank you, Alan. That's Alan Plum, by the way, who brought me all my treasures. Um, if you care to check out his channel, Shed Engineering. In fact, it was through him that I sort of originally got the idea to do this. You know. So, again, you know, to a new friend. I'll show you how I did the flywheel. Um, that side, I found, was reasonably square with the edge. Now I don't know if you can see any of this. You may just see that you can't see daylight between there. You can of course see the hollow. But I, I just tried it and to my surprise it was reasonably true. Well it, I've decided it doesn't matter about this edge because it's going to be really work. So I can grip it in the vice and all the rest of it. You know that will be done at the end. 
So that was okay. Now, so what I did, using this old vernier, yeah, we're, we're there. Right, using this old vernier, I just set it, and remember that I've cut a short piece off. I've got to keep leaning over to make sure I'm all right there. I've cut a short piece off, and all I did, I just got that and went round like that and drew that line that you've seen I cut between. And I managed to cut right down the centre. I'm going to show you what we've got. And I'm standing behind the camera and you should be able to see that. 624 there. 628. 626. Six, six, Six one seven, a little bit of a low point there. Six twenty. Now to saw by hand. Six fifteen. Six twenty five. So I've sawn by hand, and it's accurate to ten thousand. So I'm quite happy with that. I tell you, that's not bad. The hair is two thousand thick, so you can just see a wobble at about five to ten thousand. But so that's all right. So now we've got a workable piece for the flywheel. That's what we've got to do. I don't know how this video's got to turn out because we seem to be struggling a little bit. However, we've done that. Also, when I check this, that side, what I cut off with the angle grinder was very good. What I did, I put a piece of wood down there and clamped it on and went down with the angle grinder and when I checked this using the same method same place I'll just attempt to show you this and see if you can see the read I've got the hand in the way of the light now the way of the readout right that's 4317 and then I've got to turn it on its side. That is 4337. And that there is 4333. I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, but I just thought we'd have a bit of experimentation and see. So, I mean, <laughs> again, that's parallel within 10,000. That's for the start of it, it's plenty near enough. We can, because now what I'm going to do, of course, with all these uh, projects we do, no matter whether you're restoring a car or motorbike or anything at all, we can now make progress and actually do the build. Um, So I can then cut me all the pieces out I need to get them to size and they can be roughly square and everything. Then we can bolt it on and actually do the build. And when you're finished, you take it off and clean everything up and get everything as square as you can. And then um, rebuild it as the finished product. And that's how you, you know, as I say, that's how it, you always work. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for your interest, as usual. And we're making slight progress, and the build's starting to come together now, so it should be a little bit more entertaining and interesting. So, we'll see you soon.